Hey guys, if you don't already know me, I'm Fahim Saleh. At only 33 years old, Fahim Saleh had seemingly amassed a great deal of wealth. A self-made millionaire who was a globe-trotting tech entrepreneur and investor according to his LinkedIn account. However, someone wanted him dead. In the heart of the bustling metropolis where dreams and ambitions collide, a visionary tech entrepreneur's life came to a screeching halt. Fahim Saleh, a trailblazer in the tech world, founder of a revolutionary ride-hailing app, and an enigmatic figure, was found brutally murdered in his lavish New York City penthouse. So buckle up and get ready. The darkness that shrouds Fahim Saleh's murder hides secrets that will send shivers down your spine. Welcome once again to True Crime Capital. Fahim Saleh was born on December 12, 1986, in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, to Bangladeshi parents who frequently relocated for work opportunities. He grew up in a family of five, with his parents Raihana Saleh and Saleh Uddin Ahmed, and two sisters, Ruby Bashir and Rifayet Saleh. Ruby was eight years older, and Rifayet was four years younger than Fahim. In 1991, when Fahim was four years old, his family relocated to the USA in search of a better life and quality education for their children. They eventually settled in Rochester, New York. From a young age, Fahim displayed a keen interest in how things worked. He would often disassemble toys to understand their construction. His father worked as a computer programmer while his mother was a homemaker. Fahim taught himself programming at an early age and embarked on various online projects, including creating a website for his family. Fahim attended grade school in Poughkeepsie and later pursued studies at Bentley University in Massachusetts, where he earned a bachelor's degree in computer and information science in 2009. As he grew older, Fahim developed a desire to create something that would bring genuine value to humanity. He founded his first company while still in high school and used the income from another venture called Prank Dial. Fahim's entrepreneurial spirit led him to co-found Tap Fury, a gaming company that developed applications for mobile devices. However, his most significant achievement came when he founded Prank Dial in 2009 a novel and unique platform that allowed users to send pre-recorded prank phone calls to their friends and family. The idea behind Prank Dial was simple, yet ingenious, and it quickly gained popularity among users who found delight in pranking their loved ones with funny and surprising phone calls. The concept of Prank Dial was not only entertaining, but also served as an example of Fahim's keen understanding of human behavior and social dynamics. The platform leveraged humor and surprise to bring people closer together, fostering laughter and shared experiences. Under Fahim's leadership, PrankDial expanded rapidly, reaching millions of users worldwide and becoming one of the most successful prank call apps on the market. PrankDial, however, garnered controversy, as it was sometimes misused for harassment. With that said, PrankDial.com generated more than $10 million. Later, Fahim co-founded Patao, an on-demand digital platform company based in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Patao provided ride-sharing, food delivery, courier, and e-commerce services, and gained popularity in Bangladesh and Nepal. In 2015, the company was valued at $100 million. In 2018, Saleh co-founded Gokada, a Nigerian ride-hail startup focused on motorbike taxis. The company received significant funding and gained substantial popularity in the country. However, Gokada faced a major setback when authorities in Lagos decided to ban motorbike taxis in 2020. This unexpected ban resulted in severe challenges for the firm, leading to staff layoffs. The ban came at a particularly difficult time for Gokada, as they had recently raised $5,300,000 in funding from Rize Capital, a venture capital firm based in Silicon Valley, in May 2019. The Lagos state government justified the ban by citing concerns over accidents and disorderliness caused by the motorbikes. As a consequence of the ban, Gokada's revenue stream dried up, and approximately 800 bikers working for the company were immediately laid off. This situation put immense pressure on the company's operations and future prospects. In February, Fahim Saleh made an emotional plea to Nigerian officials, urging them to reconsider the ban. He expressed his deep affection for the country, stating that it was not his birthplace, but a place he believed had tremendous potential, remarkable people, and an opportunity to shine. Despite the challenges, Fahim was determined to find new ideas and directions for Gokada. He also invested in another ride-sharing company called PCAP in Colombia. His friends often referred to him as the Elon Musk of the developing world, 
and his estimated net worth was around $150 million, according to Complex. Hey guys, if you don't already know me, I'm Fahim Saleh, the CEO of Gokada. Uh, I know I've been a little bit quiet uh, as of recent events um, with the motorcycle transport ban in Lagos, but I've been trying to process it and, and figure out how I exactly want to uh, speak on the topic. I mean, uh, it's tough for an entrepreneur who's trying to innovate, who's investing his own money when this is not my country. It's, it's a country that I, I feel has amazing potential and has amazing people. And they just need the opportunity to shine. And the drivers that were at Gokata, every one of them wasn't there because they just wanted to make money. They were there because they had families. They had children, they had dreams. They wanted to start businesses. They wanted to go to school. They had degrees already, but they couldn't find jobs. For many, Gokata wasn't the final place for their lives. It was a stepping stone to get to that next endeavor. And we were hoping that a lot of these drivers wouldn't be drivers forever. We were hoping that we could place them in higher jobs within Gokata and create a, a, a beautiful community which was developing slowly and 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 it, it, it was it was really something that moved me to the point where I was okay putting all my money and all my effort in. On July 13th, 2020, Fahim left his apartment for a run and was last seen around 1.40 p.m as he returned to his apartment building after the jog. Unbeknownst to him, surveillance video captured him getting into an elevator that directly opened into his apartment. However, little did he know that he was being followed by a man wearing a black suit and a mask. Wearing a mask was not uncommon as this period was within the heart of the COVID-19 pandemic. He rode up to his seventh floor, $2,200,000 apartment. The video purportedly shows the masked man following Saleh to his apartment and then getting into a physical altercation with him. As the lift to Saleh's apartment opened, the man in the black suit swiftly launched an attack on him. Later, on the night of July 13th, neighbors heard commotion coming from Saleh's unit, prompting them to contact his sister Ruby. Concerned and unable to reach him, she went to his condo on Tuesday, July 14th at around 3.30 p.m. Fahim's sister buzzed the intercom to gain entry into his apartment. The man in the black suit realized that someone was on their way inside. In response, he quickly fled through the back door and used the stairs to escape. Little did anyone know at that point, the man in the black suit had left the apartment on July 13th and returned the next day to complete the dreadful act he had initiated. Upon entering the apartment, Fahim's sister was confronted with a horrifying and grisly scene that no family member should ever have to witness. Overwhelmed with horror and shock, she hurriedly ran out of the apartment and immediately called the police for help. On July 14th, 2020, Fahim Saleh's lifeless body was discovered in his luxurious apartment. The police confirmed that he had been killed the day before. The 33-year-old entrepreneur was found decapitated and dismembered inside his own condo at 265 East Houston Street, Manhattan. Initially, authorities came across his torso near an electric saw within the apartment. They found his limbs and body parts placed of in several large garbage bags. According to sources, the nature of the slaying appeared to be carried out with a high level of precision, leading them to describe it as professional. They noted that there was barely any blood in the apartment, and nothing seemed to have been looted. The autopsy revealed that Saleh had been brutally stabbed five times in the neck and torso, with additional wounds on his arm and left hand. We are shocked and saddened to hear the reports of the death of Fahim Saleh, one of the founding members of the Patao team, Patao wrote on Instagram. Fahim believed in the potential for technology to transform lives in Bangladesh and beyond. He saw the promise in us when all we had was a common purpose and a shared vision. Gokada described Saleh as a great leader, inspiration, and positive light. The presence of the still-plugged electric saw in the unit indicated that the suspect had fled hastily, likely interrupted by Saleh's sister's arrival. The police launched an investigation, starting with analyzing security footage. 
The footage depicted Fahim struggling out of the elevator and onto his apartment floor after being shocked by a stun gun. Police located AFID tags at the scene. What most people don't know is that when fired, a taser releases 20 to 30 colorful anti-felon identification tags known as AFID, which resemble confetti printed with tiny serial numbers, linking the taser back to its registered owner. The police later discovered that the owner of the taser had ordered it online and signed for it upon receipt, which made us for it to be traced back to him. The following day, the suspect was caught on camera taking a cab to Home Depot, where he purchased the saw and cleaning products. Detectives suspected that the killer escaped through the back door after Fahim's sister arrived. Following surveillance videos, the police traced the suspect's use of Saleh's credit card to buy a leather tote bag from a store in Soho. Another camera caught him stepping out of an Uber, holding a shopping bag from Christian Louboutin. Shockingly, CCTV footage showed a man going for walks with his mystery gal pal and buying golden 22 inches helium balloons, which he allegedly purchased with Saleh's card. A third golden balloon in the bunch was shaped like a golden heart. The balloons appeared to be for his mystery gal pal. A source referred to the suspect as the new American psycho, only dumber, highlighting the chilling contrast between his demeanor and the fact that he seems not be concerned about getting caught due to his level of Sahe's credit card. But then again, perhaps he actually thought he had really got away with murder and that he can live off of Sahe's credit card indefinitely makes you really understand the level of intellect we are dealing with here. On July 17th, just four days after the murder, the police identified the person responsible for using Salah's credit card. Salah's personal assistant, 21-year-old Tyrese Devin Haspel, was arrested and charged with murder. Haspel was found allegedly lying low less than a mile from the crime scene at an $18,000 per month Airbnb. In October 2020, Haspel entered a not guilty plea to second-degree murder, grand larceny, burglary, tampering with evidence, and concealment of a human corpse, and was held without bond. As stated earlier, Haspel allegedly stunned Saleh with a taser before fatally stabbing him on July 13th. He is also accused of returning to the apartment the next day to clean up the crime scene. During the investigation, police also discovered messages between Saleh and Haspel related to missing funds from Saleh's account. An amount of $90,000 had been transferred through PayPal to Haspel's bank account between 2017 and 2019. Saleh, upon discovering the theft, set up a payment agreement with Haspel to have the money returned, aiming to protect him from criminal charges related to the embezzlement. However, this decision seems to have led to tragic consequences. The PayPal transactions continued even after the murder, until Haspel's apprehension. It was revealed that Saleh had recently fired Haspel due to the breach of trust involving the stolen funds, likely becoming a major motive for the murder as Haspel faced the burden of repaying a substantial amount without a job. Police also discovered that Haspel harbored deep envy towards Salah's lifestyle and even pretended to be his boss during Salah's business trips. He stole from Salah, signed emails as chief of staff to associates, and took friends to Salah's luxurious apartment in Lower East Side Manhattan, passing it off as his own. Haspel even claimed Salah's dog, Layla, as his own the enigmatic woman caught on camera with Haspel purchasing balloons turned out to be none other than Haspel's girlfriend. Stepping into the spotlight, she sat down for a gripping interview and vehemently defended Haspel, asserting that the accusations against him are unfounded. She says it's time to speak out and speak up for her boyfriend, Tyrese Haspel. He's the 21-year-old police and prosecutor say committed a gruesome act, killing and dismembering the man he worked for, tech entrepreneur Fahim Saleh. I know him as a person, I know that he hates conflict and he he's so nice to people, he would never hurt a fly. He never hurt a fly, but the cops say he did a horrible, horrible thing. I know what they're saying. You don't believe them? I can't believe that. According to his Aunt Marjorie Sign, Haspel was sometimes troublesome during his upbringing, but had never shown any signs of being violent or brutal. Cena stated in an interview with the Daily News that she believed the police made a mistake because Haspel rarely displayed his emotions and seemed nonchalant in his actions, doing whatever he pleased. Haspel's childhood was challenging as he moved between various relatives' homes before ending up in foster care. His mother's mental health issues led to her being institutionalized 
leaving his maternal grandmother to care for him until she passed away when he was only 12 years old. Afterward, Sine took him in temporarily, but due to his increasing insolence, she eventually placed him with a foster family when he was 17. At the age of 16, Haspel's father passed away, though it's uncertain how involved his father was in his life. When he was 16 years old, Haspel applied to be Fahim Saleh's assistant online. Saleh, a pioneering figure in tech startups in the developing world and a self-made millionaire, already had an established reputation by the time they met. Haspel was in charge of handling Saleh's finances and personal matters. After becoming Saleh's assistant, Haspel became fixated on Saleh's jet-setting lifestyle. However, in May 2019, Saleh fired Haspel from his assistant job when he realized that Haspel had stolen over $90,000 from him. In July 2023, Haspel appeared in court after not being seen for three years. His court appearance was the latest hearing in a prolonged case that has been delayed due to the COVID pandemic. Haspel is due back in court on September 28, 2023, Saleh's family said in a statement. Fahim is more than what you are reading. He is so much more. His brilliant and innovative mind took everyone who was a part of his world on a journey, and he made sure never to leave anyone behind. Sumit Rametra, who met Saleh in college, recalled his friend's kind gestures, like buying his parents a home in a Tesla. He said that Saleh was known for his business acumen, adding, he was a machine dude, he never stopped. A video of Saleh surprising his parents with a Tesla seven years ago can be found on his YouTube channel. Here's the snippet of the heartwarming video. It's amazing. My parents are going to love it. This is actually for my parents. Oh, no way. So, uh, he's going to get this car on Saturday. Okay. And it's going to be a complete 100% surprise, yeah. That's amazing. I know, I love Very this suede. Spacious. I love the suede. It's shiny. Um, the seats are... Hold on, it's not recording. I, I'm not it doing is. it. <laughs> it's my dad. Okay. It's an Uber. It's an Uber. It's a It's a good car. It's your new car. You ordered them? No, this is the this is the one I ordered. This is a surprise. It's I mean, amazing. I came here to pay for your taxes, but we invite you to share your thoughts below on whether you believe the evidence collected during the investigation is compelling enough to secure a verdict and what you think would be an appropriate sentence if a conviction is reached. As we eagerly await the outcome of this gripping case, we promise to keep you informed and provide timely updates on True Crime Capital. Thank you for being a part of our dedicated community. If you found this video enlightening and captivating, don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel for more true crime content. Your support means the world to us. Stay tuned for the next episode, coming your way next week. Until then, Stay safe out there.